Right. So it's got salt, it's got pepper, it's got a little sweet, it's got smoke. I mean, it's just exactly no what doubt, I want, man. No doubt. Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder. I'm here at the Windy City Smoke out in Chicago, Illinois. And yesterday, I had some incredible ribs made by Wright's Barbecue from Arkansas. I asked them if they would show me how they're made. They said yes, and they're gonna show you too. So let's go see it. All right, guys, I'm here with Jordan Wright, the owner of Wright's Barbecue from Arkansas. And yesterday he blew my mind with the ribs that he's making. So can you tell us a little bit about your story in barbecue Absolutely. and and the kind of barbecue that characterizes your style? Yeah, man. So the story of us, Wright's Barbecue, home cook, started on a green egg, just grinding away on some racks of ribs and pork butts, and just making better barbecue than I could get anywhere, like, you know, locally. Sure. And so bringing those things to people and parties, events, just family, birthdays, but that's that's kind of where it started. It was like, oh man, this is really great. Mm -hmm. And then quickly you realize, as you like kind of continue to cook in life, you're like, man, all fresh cooked, like carefully take care of barbecue, it's pretty deck up good. Like yeah. you're not gonna, if you care about it, if somebody's watching it, and you're not you're not taking the sheet codes that a lot of people take to like run good businesses. Like there's a lot of things we do just to make great food that aren't necessarily great business practices, but make great food and that's right. the best business practice we can do 100%. So. them keep people coming back again and again and again because if they show up and they have a bad experience they're not going to be coming back no doubt we've got texas style brisket we've got our our glazed pork spare ribs and they've become really popular at the, at the barbecue house uh, we do bacon burn-ins at, at the house at the Ooh. barbecue house uh, our full pork chicken uh turkey we got two different types of house-made sausages and so Everything we do, we've got to hit nine out of nine meats or whatever. If we maybe have specials on there, these guys, our pick team, we've got to hit eight out of eight and you can't miss because we don't care. We don't put any posters on the wall. We don't put trophies up. Um, we just care about the next meal that customers are going to come eat. So in between the little Kansas City, Memphis, Austin, this is where Arkansas kind of lives. Right. And so we've got to pull a lot of inspiration from obviously Texas brisket. Um, but you know, we do ribs our own way. We do the bacon the way we want to do it. Yeah. You know, we just want to make good food. We got unbelievable sides, a great kitchen team. So our, our, our big motto is, Hey, look, if we, if we're serving our customers better than ourselves every single day, and then are serving our team better than our, we to treat ourselves, then Hey, we're, we're doing the right thing and serving others. So that's awesome. So can you talk about your style for the pork ribs? Yeah. Because it's totally different than how I do it. Sure. And usually if I see a rib with a lot of like, you know, a lot of sauce, you know, sauce and ribs. Yeah. So anyway, here's the thing, like, or even at the store, usually by the time we get them to plate, they're not as saucy right. as like these these glazed ribs today. Yeah. They're a little more, we kind of keep, we're keeping a little more glaze in there just yeah. to kind of make them sticky and nice for the for the crowd. But our, our, our general principle on ribs was, we started with dry rub, started salt and pepper, Texas style. Yeah. Beginning of doing a food truck, that's how I did it. Um, and I love it. I love those ribs. Those are great ribs. Yeah. As we started like to scale up and cook more ribs, the customers in our area, like some liked them, some didn't. And so then we were just like, okay, how do we find a balance between getting the bark that I want to set? Because to me, the most important part of a rib is that bark that you can get to see. That's, that's where all the flavor lies. And then the, the, the glaze is just a little panache on top that doesn't shouldn't overtake the rest of the ribs. So. Yeah, those ribs are beautifully balanced. Sure. And I think the thing that got me away from having sweeter ribs is because I started, like a lot of people, trying to imitate competition barbecue. For sure. And I was covering them in brown sugar Butter. and margarine. Yeah, it's all the stuff. It's like, yeah. I got to do like Johnny Tripp, tiger sauce, here we go. Yeah. And I just got sick of them. Because yeah. I would make them and eat them and I don't even want to keep eating. You need something in life, and this isn't everything, but especially ribs, you need them to be savory, sweet, and have a little heat. All right, so, so can you show us how to do yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's, let's do, do it, man. As you guys know, this video takes place in Chicago at Windy City Smokeout. On the six hour drive to take my smoker to Windy City Smokeout and to bring it back, guess what I was doing? I was listening to Audible. And that's today's sponsor, so I wanna thank them for sponsoring the video, but I wanna tell you guys about Audible and how much I use it and why I appreciate it so much. They have an enormous library of bestsellers, thrillers, mysteries, fiction, and my favorite, nonfiction, because I'm always trying to learn new things. Basically, whatever you're into, they've got you covered. 
In addition, they have Audible Originals. So if you want to hear from renowned experts or new voices, Audible's got you covered there too. The way I use Audible is that anytime I'm not busy doing something else, or even sometimes when I am busy doing something else, I'm using that time to learn more or to just enjoy what I'm listening to. So for instance, if I'm out here running the smoker for a long period of time, guess what I'm doing? I'm listening to Audible because I can use that time watching a fire to also learn about, say, World War II or the carnivore diet or things that interest me because that's a lot of fun for me and it's a way to use that time to not only accomplish a task but learn and grow myself. All of these resources make Audible a tremendous value and if you're an Audible member you get one free title to keep each and every month and that includes bestsellers and new releases. So if you're interested in Audible here's the best part. New members get to try Audible free for 30 days. If you're interested go to audible.com slash madscientistbbq or text madscientistbbq to 500-500. I listen to Audible all the time. I highly recommend it. I know if you guys try it you'll love it too. So Jeremy, we're out here in Windy City. We got Tommy on the ones and twos on the board. We got our spare ribs. Um, they're a great sized rib. We look for a good beady, a really fatty rib is what we're looking for. Um, we use Chairman's Reserve ribs every day at the store. Uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to flip that thing over and we'll get rid of that brisket bone. Okay. And we're going to square off the rack for plating and, and just do some general maintenance around the ribs so that we're ready to serve when we hit the board. So. Get rid of that. We don't take the membrane off. Uh, we used to, again, when you're cooking 20 racks a day, it's one thing. When you get up to 100, 120 racks in a day, it's, it's a lot of membranes. That's a, a lot, lot of, of fingers and a lot of paper towels that you just don't need to spend. So we like it. I think it helps keep the flavor in. So I think it's just, I think it's, it's, a, it's a preference deal and you try to make a big deal about the membrane. Don't ever see a difference. No, you can cook up the tenderness and yeah. don't have to worry about it. Absolutely, as long as you get a fall off the bone rib that, that that's, that's delicious, not a great. Yeah, that's a good looking rack of ribs. So now it's time to season, right? Yep, absolutely. All right. So we got our ribs trimmed. We're ready to get the seasoning down and start building that bar. Yep. So what we're gonna do is make some bright salt first meat rub, brown sugar salt, kosher salt, black pepper, paprika, garlic. It took a lot of time just kind of windling down or developing the rub. Just working through like, man, do we really need that? Do we really need honey powder? Do we really need whatever? And there's lots of different ways to do rubs, but we found that, you know, keeping it really simple is the best way to go. Totally. And if somebody wants to buy this, can they get it from the website yeah. or what? So we sell it online, brightsparky.com, and we just want a good, nice, nice coating of seasoning there. That's beautiful. So we're ready to go throw it on the cooker. Ready? Wow. That's go beautiful. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. There you go. You got an open spot somewhere. Slam her down on a spot. Like, so, I mean, our ribs all start on the bottom of the rack. Okay. We try to keep them going pretty low and slow because they go start around, what, one o'clock in the morning, Tony? Ribs are going on. So we've got, you know, say 60 racks going. We're getting them down on the bottom, building color. Yep. And so, yeah, so we'll, we'll throw them down here. Let's get it back there. We got some ribs going right there. We'll shoot in there. It's kind of hard to see, but we got ribs already cooked in. Now, starting to get better color right now, and as that color develops, then we'll start to set the bottom here shortly. Oh, that's awesome, man. It looks so good. I'm hungry again, I ate so much barbecue yesterday, it's crazy. Yeah, was... <laughs> We got rib party galore today. You got a few so, racks in there. A lot of racks. Yeah. So, not, not uncommon for us on a Saturday, is it, Zach? <laughs> <laughs> And so the next step, after you get the color you want, are you going to be spraying to keep everything soft or what? So the next step, we're going to hit it with a mop. Okay. Hit it with a mop sauce. Let that mop caramelize, let it set. Let it get a good, get a good coat, coating of the mop. Once that goes nice, we might hit it with another mop again, depending on how that's how that's going and how how, how the moisture is on the ribs. And then after that, we get that set. We'll sit it about about 30, 45 minutes before it's done. We'll get it wrapped in glaze. Got it. Well, let's get some color on these things. Let's do it. Get the mop. Get the mop. I like to check the bottom, make sure they're getting good color on the bottom once the rub's set good. Yeah. And is that the same sauce as the glaze? No, that's a, that's a different sauce. Okay. And then why do you do the mop? Because you went Texas style before, and now you do it this way. What does this give you? It's just, you did before? just another another layer of flavor profile to go with meat right. and smoke. Yeah. Okay, great. They so we'll, look we'll, incredible right now. You're looking at it basically. We just mopped it in the store. We've got mops. So we'll hit it with dab it with the mop. 
and get it going. And it's a little easier to get everywhere with the mop. Once it sets, it gets a nice caramel. It's a nice, cool, good color mahogany. Oh yeah. It's, it's set. Yeah. It's just got a, it's, it's got like seasoning marks been set. Now we've got this layer of lead and pop, and it just kind of it, it, it just advances that whole whole rip forward. Got it. So at this point, you close it up and you take it till it's done, or what? At this point, we close it down, let that mop set, yep. and then we can take it back out, hit it with the finishing glaze, and get that okay. finish it. Okay. Awesome. All right, so these have had the mop and we're ready to do the next step, right? Yep, we popped them, just let that mop set a nice plate, set a nice top on there. Ready. All right, let's see. Beautiful rack ribs oh, man, there, as you can see. It's, it's a little sticky, a little red that mop is set, so we're ready to go ahead and set that glaze. Let's do it. Get these transitioned over here. Box off. Go ahead and wrap them up. We'll get it back on the cooker for about another 40 minutes. Get it finished. Awesome. Then we get to try it, right? Yeah. Okay, absolutely. Perfect. Then we get to eat. There we go. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, what we're doing right here, we're going to open it up, and that's what we're looking for. The goal of all goals for us is to get a nice draw, have the good, have a good pullback on our bones there, and we just want to be, we want our customers to be happy with what they're seeing, and we're, we're going to be happy. We're happy, we're happy with what we see here when we pull. We get a little no, no resistance here. We know, we know we've got a good, nice render on all that. So we'll pull them over here. Okay. All right, perfect. So we're here, we're at the board, and now it's it's time to get into it, go. So we, we cut yeah. bone side down because we get these, these spares get a little unwieldy with the bones, as you're familiar with. Oh yeah. Um, so the next step in barbecue knife evolution is getting a knife that has like an X-ray and we're like beep, 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 <laughs> like a stud <laughs> finder, <laughs> a stud finding knife. It's like boom, bone. Okay, over here, good. There we go. So rock and roll, we'll get these ribs turned over. Hot whip. It's so well balanced though. Man, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just over like it's like it's not overwhelming in either what direction. Right. So it's got salt, it's got pepper, it's got a little sweet, it's got smoke. I mean, it's just exactly no what I want, man. No doubt. Yeah. I'm happy. You're happy. I'm happy. Makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, man. You know the ribs are your know, ribs are interesting because everybody's got their everybody's got their opinion and their ideas of what they want, you know, in a rib and what they're looking for. Whether it's a baby back consistent customer, or someone who's really mad that we're not, you know, doing Memphis dry rub or whatever. So we just want to make sure it's delicious. It hits on all those little little profiles and makes anyone that comes and eats with us like you know they they respect that rib. Like they know we thought about it. It's not just thrown into the cooler and brought back up, whatever, grilled on a grill. It's just, hey, look, we're smoking them. We're resting them usually a lot longer than what we did today for the <laughs> shoot. So they're not so piping hot when yeah. they hit a guest mouth, but you know, really, really good rib. Yeah. We're really proud of Great. Thanks for Great. coming and, hey, coming and doing you, it. Uh, no, we'll shake our green. Well, hey, these are rib hands. hands. These okay. are rib hands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thank you so much. Absolutely, Jeremy. This is great. Thank good you guys for guys. watching this episode of Matt Science If you enjoyed it, hit the like button down below and come off the subscribe to the channel. You can follow Jordan at MikeSpartacy.com and you can find the rub that he used today and some of the other products and make sure you get the chance to show up at the restaurant and have some of the incredible food that they're making. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.